welcome to stunning Tasmania. It is a beautiful part of the world. Today I'm fishing for one of my favourite freshwater fish. This is Jamie Harris. Jamie, where are we and what is the target? Uh, we're at Lake Rosby, Paul, and we're catching brown trout today. I like his attitude. We are catching brown trout today. That's what we're going to do. You'll notice Jamie and I are both wearing life jackets today. It is compulsory in Tasmania on a boat this size that you must wear a life jacket at all times. Great idea too. You know why? Because it saves lives. I think well done, mate. Very small fish. Oh no. He's alright? He's alright. Do you want the net? Uh, I will. Yeah, but I think we best get the I net. I want the net. <laughs> and magically a net appears. He's a solid fish, mate. Beautiful. It's slide it over. You didn't do much. Oh, hey. <laughs> mate, you will the second time. <laughs> oh, well, that is a yep. solid brownie. Just spin that around. Look at that for a fish. How dark is it? Yeah, they're all like that. Yeah. I think it's dark on you for catching it, mate. <laughs> that is a very dark brown trout. I'm just going to rest it down there. And look, how's the condition of it? It's huge. Absolutely fat as. They are fat. That's a pretty fair start after about five casts. Well done, mate. Notice my rod has turned from black to white, and that is because we've gone from soft plastics to hard bodies. And the reason for this is we were fishing the bottom, the fish were down deep, but all of a sudden we've got all this flow, we're pushing along, they've obviously started the power station up. So because we've got that movement, the fish will come off the bottom, they'll move over the edges, and now a hard body is a much better option. Gotcha. The hard body worked. Not a very big fish at all, but good call by Jamie to try something different. And this is a very, very skinny little brown trout. That's amazing. Look at that guy there, just an absolute pup. And he's eating a little, it looks just like a brown trout. That's because they eat themselves. Funny that. And if all goes according to plan, I should be able to just flick him back. Good fish. Now I've seen it all, mate. That is unbelievable. That is a stunning effort. Good fish. Oh, he's a nice fish. That is absolutely mm. mind-blowing. He followed your plastic up, mate. He did. And then swam away, then you cast back and caught the fish. <laughs> I was just guessing where he went to, and uh, he was still down there. <laughs> he must have just been hanging around. I thought, oh, I'm going to get a second chance. Ooh. There's a bit of weight to that one, mate. Oh, strong fish. I think he's done. Well yeah. done. Look at that for a slab of a trout. Mate, that was pretty cool. <laughs> he followed you, what, all the way to the top and you pulled it out of him? He actually bumped it once. Yep. And then I saw him come to the top and, yeah, teabagged it and he ate it. Sounds like a plan. That is unbelievable. What a solid fish. I'll get him out of the net and show you just how big he is. So Jamie, how does this rate as an average sort of fish for this area? I mean, it's got to be a kilo, two and a half pounds, somewhere like that. Yeah, um, there's a lot in here that size and, and bigger and obviously smaller. But no, that's a nice, nice trout. You're always happy to 
get a bag of those ones. Absolutely, be happy to catch trout like that any day, anywhere. And today the birds are singing, the sun is out, and the trout are making it a very good day. So these trout are beautiful eating out of here, but um, I'm just as happy to let them swim off and fight another day. So we'll let him go. There he goes. Maybe he's just moving us to a new location. The fish seem to be sitting on these rock faces. And while we're traveling, I thought I'd run you through the gear of choice. This is one of the beautiful new Shimano 3.0 rods. Absolutely love it. This is the Ultralight 702. So good in the hand, feels amazing. The real, one of my favorites, Shimano Stratic CI4. This one is a 2500 FA. And of course, four pound fins braid. Seriously, it's gonna stop anything that this river can throw at me. Oh, that's a good fish. That is a good fish. That, he ate that right of the right boat, boat again. Yeah. Yep. So they're obviously following it. They're very hungry today. Oh, oh, oh look, look we have got him. <laughs> that is unbelievable. <laughs> that is wrong on every level. He's actually just swimming out a look and you've nailed him. Took a swipe at it at the boat and pinned him in the, in the gut. <laughs> that is unbelievable. No wonder he's fighting hard. I've heard a gut hooked fish. <laughs> this one is actually gut hooked, mate. He is. Oh. He's, he's having a crack. Feisty little fella. He's giving you some. <laughs> and he is wow. done now. Do we need a net? Uh, we probably do. He's only got light lead at. Yeah. That is very funny. There is our trout hooked in the belly. Look at that, it's like x-ray vision. You can see where he took it. There he goes. You can probably tell we are fair hooting now. The current here is just unbelievable. Oops, just lost my footing. So what we've done, we've gone back to hard bodies and we're now throwing big lures into the side little eddies, hoping there's some big fish tucked away from this raging torrent. amazing when you're heading down a river like this and you see structure like that, you just know you're going to catch a fish. There are so many great spots for fish to hide there. Just a matter of working your lure around every corner, every crevice, and just trying to find what pocket the fish are sitting in. But it is exciting, like you drift along for a couple hundred metres, you see that, and the heart starts to pound a little bit quicker. So at the moment we're, we're just fishing right at the uh, power station where the water runs down from Lake McIntosh and runs through the power station turbines. At the moment it's switched off so we've got still water but there's usually a few trout hold up in here so we're just sneaking along and working the bottom hard. Right on the bottom again? Yep, hard on the bottom. Nice little fish. Not massive, but... Still on the chew. Oh, that's a better fish. Come on. Oh. oh no. 
He's a nice fish, mate. Excuse my backside. Now, obviously, there's some pretty serious technique happening here, mate. What do you mean by <laughs> hard on the bottom? <laughs> Explain. Well, you need to sink it down on a slack line so it gives the lure the best at action, best yep. possible action. And then actually let it stay on the bottom as long as you can, then flick it up again? Oh, as soon as you see your line go slack, you, you know, you want to give it a lift, so... Yep. So just keeping it, keeping it in the bottom metre, I guess. Okay. Oh, oh, and release. Our rig today is quite simple but very effective. Four pound fins braid, attached via a slim beauty knot is eight pound instinct fluorocarbon, and all I do is tie a uni knot to my soft plastic. That way I can cast my leader through the guides, but the fish won't see my braid because they've got this beautiful clear leader on the end. Oh, this is a bite. Yep, gotcha. Oh, a bit of weight there too. Now that was incredible. I cast that towards the shore and I was actually gonna go through the technique with you and I was just letting it sink down and as it sunk down, it just went thump and I got the tiniest little bite. And you actually see the bite in the braid. He's a nice fish. And then I just left it and the key, he's gonna go nuts here. He hasn't done much, but the key is not, oh, there he goes. That's beautiful release. The key when you feel that little bite is just not to panic, let it just go away and then dunk and put that hook in the fish. And it's so much fun when you've got the soft plastic and it's all actually working. It's just about getting it out there and letting it sink. The key is to get it to the bottom because these fish, believe it or not, they're feeding right on the bottom. And if you work your plastic too quickly, you won't have any joy. So let it sink down, little hop, then wind up your slack and just hold a little bow in the line. And I can see now that it's falling towards the bottom and it goes slack. So now I do that little hop. And you just got to take your time. If you work it too quickly, you won't get it past the fish because they are dead set on the bottom. I reckon the bromine is low. And when you get it down there, you're getting bites. Oh, nice. Actually saw him rise and he ate it. Oh, he's a solid fish, mate. I actually saw him rise. I saw him rise there before and we was just chatting away and I flicked it out and he ate it. Slide him over. He's probably still pretty green. He looks brown from where I'm sitting. <laughs> he checks. Right. He's not quite ready. You always bring the fish to the net, not the net to the fish. And if you can grab the net for me, I'll grab your beautiful fish and look at that. Wow, we solid brown trout from Tasmania. Are these West Coast trout, exactly the same strain of trout as the rest of the island? I think so, mate, yes. I think they build a bit fatter over this side, don't <laughs> they? go hard. Good work. Just like you said, mate, right on that steep bank. Yep. And he come in and smack it straight away. Come on, mate. That's a nice fish. How's the colours on this thing? I mean, when you see a rainbow trout, it hits in the face, that beautiful pink bar down the side. But just check out how gorgeous these things are at those incredible spots. Look at the colour. And that is why quite often you make a lure called a spotted dog, put a bit of white paint on, whoops, and then put a little red spot in the middle because these things, they like to eat themselves. They also like to keep their territory by knocking the small fish out of the way. So if you make your lure look like a little trout, it works very effectively. This time, the old Gary Glitter has done the job. Mm -hmm. 